Hamilton, uh, maybe six. And this is the hardest thing I've shown you, but you're going to love this if you hate sewing the ends of your infinity scarves together. After doing about a hundred of these, I knew I needed to find another solution. And um, uh, first thing is, never shown you this before, but I don't usually make a scarf with two skeins of woolies. If I'm using woolies yarn, I usually just divide the, the uh, skein in half, and I just like to use something like this postal scale, and I will um, weigh it until, and I will ball up part of it until these ends are equal in weight. That's 2.7, that's 2.9, so I know I need a little bit more on this. And this way I can work with two strands and make one scarf with two strands and use the largest pipe, which they sell as one and a half inch, but when you measure the actual diameter across there, it's one and seven eighths. So that's 2.9. 2.9 so now I know I have two strands that will be roughly the same length and that's how I start a scarf and if I'm making a um, uh, an infinity scarf with woolies and two strands I usually make it eight stitches across on the one and seven eighths inch pipe with two strands but what I want to show you today is a way of joining your scarves without sewing them together. You are going to weave them together, basically knit them together while you're casting off. So the first thing you have to do is put on your eight stitches. And what I like to do with my yarn, by the way, is I don't generally even ball the other half up. I just leave it the half skein. I put it in a big basket that I line with plastic so it won't snag the yarn. And I just pull it off out of there. And I usually keep the basket on the floor next to me. And the first thing you need to do is uh, put on your eight stitches. So just like we've always done, we're going to um, use a slingshot cast on. So make your slit knot and put on your eight stitches. And hopefully you'll be able to see this yarn against this white pipe. There's three, four, Make sure your yarn, you're going to have to tug at it occasionally, pull off some length. You don't want any tension on that when you're casting on or when you're knitting. So let's say you want eight stitches on your scarf. That's what we're going to use for this demonstration. So, now I've got my eight stitches and the first thing I'm going to do is turn this over now that I've cast this on and separate this a little bit. So you're going to see here's the first stitch you put on. That's the knot that's formed by making the slip stitch. And then each of these little V's are where you cast on that stitch. And you're going to mark all those spots. You can use safety pins if you want to, but they'll often snag the yarn. What you really want is to buy uh, stitch markers and stitch markers that open and close because otherwise you won't be able to get them off. These happen to be boys stitch markers and they uh, come in a 35, pound, 35 count pack in three different colors and I like to alternate the colors as I go along and mark my stitches because it makes it easier to see when I cast off and join this edge. So what you want to do is lay out enough stitch markers. It'll cover the whole thing. So you need eight stitch markers for eight stitches on. Make sure after you've put these on that you actually count. So the first place you're going to start is right at this knot, which is your slip stitch, and between this stitch. So mark it. These are I like these. They're a little rubbery. They're kind of like working with a gummy worm, but once you have them on there, then they just snap close. And that's, you need to use a stitch marker that will open or you won't be able to get them off when you're done. So we're going to go yellow, pink, blue. Doesn't, ma <clears throat> doesn't matter, but you need to, uh, if you alternate in a regular fashion, it will be much easier at the end. And I will, you'll see that when we get there. So you're going to put one of these stitch markers between each of these stitches and over that V. 
So we have yellow, pink, blue, yellow, pink. Here's another little V between the stitch. So now I know I need a blue one. Here's another stitch. So next I'm going to put a yellow one. Now at this last one, you are going to need to, my yarn was on the other side, you are going to need to make half of a square knot, which I think is a half hitch knot, but I'm not sure. And just do this. So you see your yarn, your tail was hanging free, your, your working yarn is here. Just go one time, an overhand knot or whatever it's called there. And you're going to mark that spot. The reason you're going to put that half a knot there is because you have to hold your stitch marker. And I'll make the pink one. So when you are done, be sure you count your stitch markers and make sure you have eight on. Now proceed as usual with your knitting. Okay, so I've put on, oh, I don't know how many rows, um, but I do know if I'm using the one and seven eighths inch pipe and I'm using two strands of woolies, I usually need 12 to 14 rows for a cowl and anywhere between 40 and 44 for a long infinity scarf that will be about 60 inches long. If you want to, buy yourself a, a simple row counter and you can keep track this way. But So I've knitted on here in stockinette stitch, so doing them all as front stitches, enough that I can show you how we're going to join these ends. And the other thing I did not point out yet is I have taken to, when I put my pipe on here, my cover pipe, and put it on the half inch rod. I just take a little piece of masking tape, it doesn't have to be long, maybe what I got there, an inch and a half, and place it over the elbow and over the cover pipe. And that's enough to keep it from bouncing up and down and rolling around. Another viewer said uh, she likes to take and wrap sticky, uh, that sticky mat material between the pipes, and that works too. But I generally just take a, a piece of masking tape and stick it right there. So, but this is the important part that I want to show you today. So, uh, let's assume that your scarf or cowl is the length you want. Here is the end where you cast on with the stitch markers. The side that's facing to the outside, this is your purl side of your stockinette fabric. The other side is your knit side. And what you're going to do is basically join these together like this, so that the wrong side is facing in. So you're going to need to pull off enough of your working yarn, it's still obviously on your balls, but if you take it and put it up over the knitting, this makes this process a little bit easier here. And bring your knitting up and make sure you can see all of those stitch markers. I would take, if you're and you can do this on either side. If you were casting off from the left, it would work the same way. The only difference is that tail from when you cast on would be at the opposite end, but it doesn't matter. So take your working yarn now in your hand and use your last two fingers to hold your working yarn against your palm. Hold the, your uh, thumb then and your forefinger on the top of the working yarn and come through now on this side, the good side, the knit side, and use it to hook your working yarn and bring it through. So you are now, don't pay any attention to this, this is just your tail. You're just going to be pulling the working yarn through the stitch, the first one, the pink one, and you're going to start on the purl side, the wrong side if you will, and be bringing it through to the front. Keep a hold of that working yarn in your hand. Now you have a loop of yarn here. If it seems too long, pull it down a little bit and hold that loop right here. Take off, this is your casting off now. You're going to be incorporating these old stitches from the very first row into your cast off row. This is what you're doing. So now take off your first stitch. And that's two strands again, remember, and lay it over the loop you created of the working yarn. Use your left hand release a little bit of that tension so that you can pull the working yarn up and put it on the pipe. Now you can snug it up a little bit, not too much. 
Now you started with a pink stitch marker and this is why it's important to have a order that you can follow because you know the next one that you go through has to be yellow and you want to make sure you get get it in the right place so I'll even take my fingers and make sure I can feel the whole stitch marker then I use my fingers to grab the working yarn pull it through still have a hold of the working yarn in my right hand but now the working yarn I've grabbed that loop now with the front of my right hand I'm holding it up in the air so that I can take off my next stitch with my left hand and lay it over my working yarn that loop now use your left hand to pull release some of that tension so you can get a little bit of yarn put it up on your pipe snug that stitch if you want to it doesn't have to be real you don't want this tight you want that firm enough because now you need to cast off the first stitch you made and you need to pull it over the second stitch now I know my order was yellow pink blue so you can see this or pink yellow blue you can see my last stitch marker is up in here here's my blue one reach around and make sure you have your actually in the stitch and not just half of the stitch grab your working yarn see I'm using my fingers to pull my working yarn through again release that tension of your right hand you could let go but sometimes this will depending on heavier how heavy your scarf is sometimes this will sag down so it seems like your hands are very busy and they are but you'll you'll get the hang of it soon so now you're through your blue stitch now off comes another stitch and just as before, over the working yarn, that loop of working yarn, pull the working yarn through, up on the pipe, snug it up, remove the first stitch by pulling it over the last stitch you made. Okay, now your next one you're looking for is pink. If you need to, write it down. I don't always put it in the same order, so sometimes I'll just write it down because I'll lose track of where I'm at. And again, make sure you're going through the whole stitch where that stitch marker is. You're taking your fingers from the right side through, grabbing the working yarn, pulling it through. Again, release some of the tension on your fingers, on your palm. Bring off the next stitch. Lay it over the working yarn. Pull it up. Snug it up. Cast off. You should have four stitch markers left and four stitches on your pipe and if you don't something's wrong you've either missed a stitch when you marked it every stitch is made the same way pull it up snug it up a little bit take the stitch off now I need a blue one again make sure you're in the whole stitch not just part of it bring it over put it on snug it up bind it off you have two stitches remaining, two stitch markers left. You're almost done. Bring it over there. Pull your stitch up. Pipe it. Take off the stitch. You have one more left. Now sometimes this one gets a little twisted around, so use your fingers just to bring it back. There's your last stitch. Pull your yarn through. Take your stitch off. Pull it up pipe it, tighten it up a little bit, cast off, this is your last stitch and this is where you would cut your yarn and bring it through this pipe. Now I'm not going to cut it but I will bring it through and tighten it so that I can show you what happens. So now you're done and that's what that looks like but that's not going to stay that way because very gently you're going to pull both sides of this scarf and you are going to bring those stitches together and what you're seeing then are the V's that were created when you cast on and cast off and you're going to be left with not an invisible seam but one that's actually decorative and you'll see it's it's quite raised up on the surface but it looks real good when you're wearing it there's other ways of doing seams but I think this is fast easy and it looks really cute and now all you have to do is turn it inside out and this is the inside now you're gonna see all your stitch markers lined up here and you're gonna have tails you're gonna have the tail from your initial cast on and in this case because I cast off from the same side 
of pipe, the right side that I cast on with, my tails are on opposite ends. And for weaving in, I prefer that. So if given a choice, now see my thing just came out because I only had looped that through there. So just pretend that it didn't. Um, I prefer to try to cast off from the same pipe I cast on with so that my tails are at opposite end and then I can just weave them in. And I like these, if you can find them. Susan Bates Finishing Needles. And you will see they're all I. And you can get any number of thick, heavy yarn through there so that you can take this now, put it through your uh, finishing needle, and I like to weave it in. I don't take the whole stitch where the stitch marker is. I just use half. So separate that with your fingers and weave it in. And I just go in a few inches. Again, separate those. So you're just going around two strands, not four. And then once I'm in there, sometimes I'll bring them all the way to the center if it's fine yarn, and then I tie a knot using this tail and the opposite tail. Or if this were two pieces and I, well, I'll do that. Let's cut this. So take your finishing needle off. I back out just one of these strands that I wove it through with. You can also use your fingers to weave it through, but I think this is foolproof to use a needle and then tie it around the strand. I just use a square knot and cut it. Then make sure that you remove all of your stitch markers. They'll just unsnap. Count them when you're done and you should have. Otherwise it's easy to leave one in there. And then just remove them when you're finished and you'll have a beautiful seam that took no time at all.